What's up guys, welcome back to the Dobbin ETV. Today's another amazing day to get out there and we're gonna be better today than we were yesterday. And for today's video, I brought with me a professional player. He plays on the Toros in the USL Championship League. His name is Robert Cassianis, and we call him Caste. And pretty much he's gonna be telling you his story from how he went pro from his 10th grade year in high school all the way to Mexico and to where he is now. So I'm gonna leave the floor for him so you guys can witness this story. And I hope you guys can find, you know, something that you can learn from this from him firsthand. Hi guys, this is Gaste, and I'm gonna let you guys know a little bit about my story and everything that I had to do to get myself where I'm at. kind of changed in my career at the age of 14. Um, at that moment, I was playing club soccer back home and high school soccer for uh, my city called Palmdale in California. Um, at that moment, I had an opportunity to come up to play in Tijuana for Cholos uh, in Mexico. At that time, you know, it was just a big opportunity for me, but uh, my parents told me like, you know, school starting up, you can't miss school, you have to go to school. That was like, you know, priorities right there. So at that moment, I had the opportunity, but my parents kind of didn't see it for me. So um, my coach ended up talking to my parents, telling them that this opportunity only comes like one in a lifetime. And I knew what I'm capable of. I knew this opportunity. I knew I could make something of it, but I had to follow what my parents were saying. And obviously school came first. So at that moment, my main focus was school and then soccer second. Um, so my coach started talking to my dad and obviously Cholos wanted me to present myself on Monday to start uh, training with them for a two week tryout. And I was super motivated, happy to go, but I already knew my parents' reaction. And obviously with them, they said no. So after my coach is done talking to my parents, um, that Saturday night, my dad called me into his room and we, you know, we had a discussion and my dad told me like, uh, I think it's a good decision for you to go to Mexico for two weeks and try out and you will come back. And at that moment, I knew that I was not gonna come back. Like, my, it's not that my parents doubted me, but it was just that my dad was just two week child and you come back and start school. But deep down I knew like if I'm leaving home, I'm not coming back and that's where I'm gonna keep chasing my dream and make something of it. So uh, the next day I ended up leaving with my coach. Uh, we drove down to Tijuana and once we got there, it was just like, it was surreal. Like it's happening, I left my whole life behind. And um, it was difficult, you know, at first it was kind of difficult. I was like, I might not see my family again, my friends, you know, all the opportunities back home, like parties, uh, meeting my friends, meeting new friends in school, like all of that, I left it behind for this dream. But deep down I knew like, now I'm here and I have something to do and I have something to prove. So I had a two week trial with Cholos and it was difficult. It was probably one of the hardest challenges in my life because I came from a little bit, you know, back home, my family was able to maintain themselves and provide what I needed in my life. But in Mexico, I was fighting against players that didn't have nothing, like players that all they had in life was soccer. Like that's it, like the whole family depended on them because of soccer. Like they had to make it to get their family out of poverty. And I've never felt that, you know? I felt dry for soccer, but I've never felt like this is all I had. So going to, going to compete against them day in and day out, like the competition was cutthroat. It was, it was difficult. Uh, these players didn't have cleats. They could you know, take their shoes, like, and, I, and, and seeing that, seeing that I'm competing against these players that have nothing and this is all they have to give, 
that changed my whole mindset, that changed my, my drive. And I was like, I want to feel what they feel. And I ended up, you know, I had a being, uh, it's called Casa Club. It's in, you know, they housed us in a room with like 20 players. And I ended up knowing everybody's story and everybody that was there were from all over Mexico. So I ended up understanding their pain, understanding their journey and their stories. And that fueled me because day in and day out, I was fighting with them for opportunity, for a chance. And, and that drove me to get where I needed to be. And that molded me to become the player I wanted to be. And it was, it was difficult to see their families have nothing. They live in, in, in houses they built themselves. You know, some of them were houseless. You know, they, they, everything they did was for their family. And that kind of changed my mindset until I have to be the same. And everything I do from now on is for my family and my loved ones. And I was able to keep striving and, and becoming one of the best in, in Mexico. And um, at that moment, there were some complications because uh, FIFA passed a rule of foreign players playing in a foreign country. And I wasn't able to, to play in the Youth Academy of Cholos because I was underage. I had to turn 18 to be able to compete with them. So at that moment, Cholos uh, teamed up with an academy team in Nomad uh, called Nomads in San Diego. And that's when I got loaned out to Nomads to play uh, two seasons until I turned 18. My first season of academy was kind of difficult, you know. I was trying to get adjusted back to playing uh, American soccer and everything because it's a two different kind of lifestyle, different kind of environment, different kind of competition. So my second year of academy soccer, that's when I knew like, this is it, this is everything I worked for, you know. This is my last year in academy and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have an opportunity in Mexico and I have to be ready for it. And it was, it was, it was hard, you know. Um, at that moment, I just had to stay motivated. Like I had to keep pushing and, and I had to work out twice a day, you know, like I had to keep pushing, I had to keep going to the gym, I had to keep getting myself better. And that's what kept me pushing. And that year was one of my best years, 2016. Uh, I was playing for Nomads Academy and that's when we made it to the final four of the academy. And we had all the attention we wanted. I was the captain of the team at the moment. So I was gaining, you know, a lot of attention to be able to help the team get to that level and get to that kind of platform to keep uh, performing and competing. Uh, we ended up coming short and, you know, making it only to the final four. We got knocked out in the semifinals. After we got knocked out uh, on the semifinals, you know, it was difficult and, um, you know, it was it was heartbreaking because, you know, we we're the underdogs and we wanted to prove something. But I was so proud of my team for making it that far. And obviously being the underdogs, everybody, you know, they didn't think we were going to make it. And eat, let alone that far. And we did. And we proved everybody wrong. And that's when um, a lot of opportunities came for my team and for myself. You know, I had a, I had a couple of college offers. It was the first time I ever get called up to the U.S. national team. I got called into U20 count for the uh, qualifiers to the World Cup. And that was just, you know. It was such a relief that all my hard work from the age of 14 to 18, it took me four years to get called up to the national team. Four years. And it was, it felt, it felt amazing, you know, that it took me that long, you know, and all my hard work finally was paying off. And, and even in those four years, like I was still telling myself, like, why am I not on the national team? Why am I not called up? But I didn't let that stop me. I kept driving. I trained twice a day, every day with the team and then on my own. I did everything I had to do to get myself ready for this opportunity and to know that every time I was playing, I was doing my best. And, and I know a lot of you guys want to be on the national team and everything. And sometimes it might not come now, but it will come in the future. All your hard work will pay off at the end. It took me four years to get called to the national team. And I, and I worked nonstop. And some days I was like, is this really going to happen? And, and I prayed and everything. And, and it finally came, you know, it finally came into reality. And it was the biggest blessing, you know, finally, like, all that hard work is paying off now, and now it's time to prove myself. You know, now it's here. Now I have to grab it and not let it go. So I ended up going to the national team in New York. I played uh, two friendlies uh, versus New York Cosmos and uh, New York Red Bulls. We ended up winning both games. Uh, it was a great experience. I was competing against the best players in our country, just kind of seeing the level they're at. Just got me more hungry. I ended up coming back to uh, the state. I went and then come back to San Diego. And at that moment, that's when everything um, kind of fell into place and I had to make a decision. I had a couple of teams in the state wanting me uh, to sign with them. I had a couple of college offers and obviously uh, Cholos at that moment wanted me to return and then signing with them. So I had a lot of pressure on my hands. I had to make the right decision for myself and for my family. Uh, at that moment, I had an agent. Um, I was talking to my family and my agent to see what's the best decision for myself. Um, I knew my whole life I wanted to play in Mexico. I wanted that kind of competition. I wanted that lifestyle that just 
every day you have to bring it. There's players out there that don't have nothing and that's the competition I wanted to be in. Every day players come in and come out, new players come in and just that competition drives me. So I knew I wanted to go back to Mexico. My decision was to go back to Cholos, but my agent ended up uh, notifying me that a new team in Mexico was interested in me and it was Atlas FC. They're based in Guadalajara, Jalisco. And that was, that just changed everything for me. That's where my parents are from. So like, just to be able to represent where my parents are from and playing for their city. And obviously at that moment, one of the biggest players in Mexico played there and obviously he plays my position. So from watching him on TV to being able to be on the same pitch as him was like incredible. It was like so surreal. So his name was Rafa Marquez. Um, if you guys don't know, he's one of the biggest icons in Mexican history. Uh, he was playing at Atlas at that moment. So at that moment, I just made the decision to go to Atlas. I felt like that was the best place to be for my development and to become the player I needed to be. So I ended up flying to Guadalajara, I ended up signing with Atlas, a three year guaranteed contract. Um, so I ended up being, them, being with them for a year. It was great experience, uh, just competing in that environment, like preseason, like training twice a day, training at the beach, and then doing uh, 11 v 11 in the afternoon, just pushing our bodies to the limit now. Going from academy to a professional environment was scary. It was it was hard, but I was I was hungry and I was ready for it. And it was difficult in the beginning. You know, the players are way more skilled for me, way more experienced than me. But I didn't not let that face me. Like I knew what I'm about and I knew what I am capable of doing. So I just kept striving and I kept learning from them. And I listened. That was the biggest thing for me. Is just when you're in an environment that's new for you and, and there's a lot of players way better than you. Uh, stronger than you, faster than you, just listen and learn from them and apply what you need to get yourself better. So I was with Atlas almost a year uh, due to some complications with FIFA and um, some things with my contract. I ended up having to leave um, a little bit earlier out of my contract. Uh, so at that moment, it was difficult, you know. Um, everything I ever asked for was there in Guadalajara, there in Atlas for me. And um, I had to make another change and, you know, I was already making that place my home but it was for my career and obviously some things were out of my power. So I had to make the decision to leave uh, Atlas and come back to the States and it was difficult, you know, but I didn't let that phase me. Um, I just kept pushing. I said, this is not gonna determine my dreams and this is not determine why I stopped. And it was a minor setback at that moment, but I used it as motivation. So I ended up coming back to the States. Um, at that moment, I had Portland Timbers and Galaxy really interested in me. I ended up saying to myself, it's time to come home. It's time to play. Uh, close to my parents. I've been away from home since I was 14. So I ended up signing with LA Galaxy Was there with them one season and uh, I would say it was a blessing being able to be with all those great players uh, Being in the same environment learning off of them But as well, you know, I was in one of the biggest teams in the state and obviously everybody wanted to be a, beat us Everybody wanted to be there and the competition was cutthroat as well uh, we we're getting looked at by everybody. Any mistake you did, you got bashed for it because you're just LA Galaxy. Everybody wants to be them. So it was difficult, but it was nothing I could handle. I knew what I'm what I was about. I knew that this would keep me pushing. So Towards the end of the season, I ended up catching an injury um, that on my fifth metatarso, it's the little bone um, outside your pinky. Uh, it was a stretch fracture. I ended up missing 10 game, uh, 12 games out of the season, and it was it was hard. It was another setback for me, another low point because you know I came to the states and I told myself like this is my year, this is where I prove myself, this is where I keep pushing and accomplishing more goals. And and obviously sometimes injuries come and that's part of the game. And you guys. Gotta understand that you have no control over that. You know, you could do, I did everything I had to do, ice bath, take care of my body, uh, recovery, stretching, everything I needed to do, but yet an injury still happened and I had no control over that. But at the end of the day, I used that same thing as I always do as motivation. And I didn't let that say, oh, you're gonna come back weak. I came back stronger. 
but at that moment it was difficult season had ended i missed about the last part of the season i had no leverage uh, obviously for me the biggest thing is it's not how you start it's how you finish so i wasn't able to finish the season strong so obviously me and galaxy uh, didn't you know agree to a following contract uh due to you know complications within my contract that we didn't see eye to eye uh, and it was difficult, you know, I ended up, uh, you know, talking to them and then they releasing me and I had to end up finding another team. And at that moment, it was, you know, rock bottom once again for me, you know, being a free agent, all those out there that are looking to become professionals and looking for contracts and looking for a team to be, I know it's tough, uh, it's difficult. You know, at one point in my career, I was at the highest point in my career and now I'm a free agent. And that was difficult. That was hard to understand. And now some teams that wanted me don't want me now. And and it was it was difficult to keep myself motivated. And during off season, you know, just keep training. And and I told myself um, I wasn't gonna stop. And I had for me the biggest motivation having the right people around me. I had my personal trainer David Nunez that kept me training during off season. Like I know everybody during off season goes back home. Like I don't go back home with my family. Like they knew. I had to sacrifice this this off season for myself and I had to do it because I wasn't guaranteed a contract next year. And I ended up going to San Diego to stay with my personal trainer all off season, all off season. I trained twice a day, every day, gym session in the morning, training in the afternoon, every single day. While everybody was back home with the families, you know, enjoying this family time off season, I couldn't stop because I had something accomplished. I wasn't guaranteed something next year. And, and I knew that this wasn't gonna determine where my career ended. So I had my agent backing me up, believing in me. I had my family believing in me and I had my personal trainer putting the resources in front of me to better myself. Even though opportunity wasn't there, I knew I was gonna get myself ready for anything. So that whole off season, it was, it was really difficult. I was depressed, um, you know, I, like I said, I was at the highest point in my career and now I'm at the lowest point, but I feel like you need to go through these things. These things make you and you are determined. You are the one that chooses either this makes you or breaks you. And at that moment, I told myself that I was not gonna let this break me. I was gonna use this motivation. I was gonna keep striving and I was gonna make it as far as possible. So this, people like all you guys listening could know that if I'm able to make it, you guys too, regardless any setback, regardless what happens in your life, you could accomplish what you want if you put your mind to it. So I ended up putting my mind to it. Next year started, uh, everybody signing contracts. You know, I'm just looking on my Instagram, looking at my friends. Obviously, so, so grateful that my friends are able to sign some contracts, but I had nothing, you know. It was difficult and stay motivated was so difficult, you know, but I just, you know, had the right people around me that kept me motivated and, and that's what kept pushing me. And by almost the start of the season, uh, my agent ended up getting in contact with uh, Houston Dynamo and I was able to, you know, get an opportunity to come to Houston Dynamo and, and be with their affiliated team, RGB Toros. And I knew it at that moment, this is where I go up. This is a turning point in my career. And I've had so many setbacks in my career, free agent, free, being a free agent, injury, uh, getting getting my contract taken from me due to you know politics and stuff outside of my control. And I still didn't let that determine where my career was gonna stop. So I'm telling you like this lifestyle is cutthroat, it's difficult, but nobody's gonna get it unless you want it. Like nobody's gonna believe in you unless you believe in yourself. And that's what I knew. I knew no matter what I did in my life, everything since I was 14 till now, everything I do in my life has been dedicated to soccer. Everything was a result for soccer. And I know right now I'm proud of where I'm at, but I'm not satisfied. I'm still hungry. I have a lot of things to accomplish. And uh, out, everybody out there that could relate to a couple things I went through, like injuries, like that doesn't determine you. Regardless what injury you have does not determine you. Like I'm telling you, your injury will happen setbacks will happen those things make you stronger like i felt like i had to hit rock bottom in my career so it can make the person i am today like i know how it tastes down here and i know how hard it is to be down here when no one believes in you when nobody wants you when it's hard to believe in yourself like i know how that feels and and that motivated me to be where i'm at now like i'm not stopping now and i won't stop for nobody until i accomplish what i need to accomplish and, and I'm so grateful for everything that's happened to me. I never ever will say, I wish this didn't happen to me because I'm glad it happened to me because it molded me to what I am now and I won't stop until I get what I want. And everybody out there listening to me, I hope this changes your perspective. I hope this motivates you. And like like me, this is all I got. Like I, this is, if you understand me, it's because you have a purpose, because you have this kind of like hunger in you. Like this is my purpose, This is this is what I do. 
And maybe some of you guys won't understand me, and that's fine. But there's a few out there that will understand me and have this purpose and have this hunger. And those are the ones I'm talking to out there. And don't give up. Like this is, I know it's difficult. I know it's hard. Like, like, like they always say, like, if it was easy, everybody can make it. But you, you gotta believe in yourself. You gotta believe that you'll make it. And you gotta tell yourself that until you do. And then once you do, now what are you gonna keep doing to keep going up? I remember what I had, like, I always remember what I had to do when I was 14, 15, 16, 17 to get myself where I'm at. I trained twice a day, every day. I did the extra work. I had to cut people off my life. I had to get a better diet. I had to sacrifice parties, girls, everything. Like, it, you have to do it sometimes. And if you're not willing to sacrifice those things, you won't make it as far as you want. So I, I always say, get out of your comfort zone. If you're comfortable back home, if, if you have opportunities are coming up, but you have to leave home, you have to leave your girlfriend, you have to leave stuff, like sometimes you got to do it for yourself, you know, because at the end of the day, nobody's going to get it for you. You have to get it for yourself. And that's the biggest thing for me. I've always been motivated to get my own stuff. And obviously I do this for my family. I have my reasons why I do this. And I, hopefully you guys understand this and, and, um, and could relate to most of the things. And I just want to say, just don't give up. Like, don't give up. Find the reasons why you want this and let that wake you up every morning to work. Like, there's no way that someone else could outwork you. Like, I went to Mexico and I had people that had nothing outwork me. And that motivated me because now I won't ever let anybody outwork me. Like, that molded me when I was 14. You know, playing against the best players in the country, in the national team. I saw their abilities, their talent. And I told myself, I don't care how talented you are, I won't let you outwork me. And, and that's what I keep doing. And I'm never going to be satisfied with where I'm at. I'm going to keep this hunger inside of me to keep getting better every, every day. And I hope you guys can relate to some things I said. And hopefully motivate yourself to be the best version of yourself. Like, compete against yourself, too. Like, the biggest competition you have is yourself. Motivate yourself. Push yourself. Surround yourself with the right people that believe in you. Believe in your dream. That push you forward. And those people that don't believe in you, you know, use that as motivation to prove them wrong. Surround yourself with the right people. So I appreciate you guys listening to my story. And obviously, you know, hopefully you guys could take some things out of it and um, you guys could grow from them. So um, this is Cassianos and I'm out. A little better? That was fantastic. <laughs> I can't feel my face, but nothing really cannot stop me till I fall.